Welcome to Living Waters Church of God. We hope you'll enjoy the teaching by Apostle Sharon E. Harris. She's the author of Understanding Spiritual Warfare and also Intercessory Training of Gatekeepers, Prayer Warriors, and Watchmen on the Walls, and more. You may purchase her books at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, or wherever books are sold. May you be blessed by today's program. Now here is Apostle Sharon E. Harris. Grace and peace be multiplied to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. We are continuing our teaching on the intercessory training of gatekeepers, prayer warriors, and watchmen on the walls. Intercessors are important because we need a connection to a power that is greater than the powers of darkness that we face on this earth. And God is that power, so we need to be connected and stay connected to the power that will ensure victory in this ongoing warfare. Spiritual warfare is real, and that is why we need to train our intercessors. Our gatekeepers need to know, like trained foot soldiers, on how to keep the gates of the church, of our lives, of our cities, etc. Prayer warriors need to be trained on how to war and to do airstrikes, like the Air Force Marines. Our watchmen on the walls need to know how to ascend in the spiritual realm and to look to the aid of the Holy Spirit to see what is on the radar and to sound the alarm to alert the gatekeepers and prayer warriors and spiritual dignitaries on impending danger on what action to take in order to take the enemy down. In the ancient world, Large watchtowers were built overlooking fields, and a watcher would mount the city walls in times of distress to survey the scene outside the fortifications, meaning outside the walls that surrounded the city. A city is fortified when there are walls, are, when there are walls that are built around it. To fortify simply means to protect, to barricade in. The watchman was situated on a high spot from which he could monitor those who approached the town. Israel's watchmen were guards that would stand upon the walls of Jerusalem and in towers, and they would look out across the land for any activity that seemed suspicious. He said above all, so he could see above and beyond. He is able to see the horizon. Israel's watchmen were placed on walls, high above the ordinary person and high above the ordinary operations of life. That sets them at a vantage point, which gives them the ability to see things that are afar off. There are times when the watcher uh, would observe in standing vigil, just observing the daily life of the city. He could see much of the activity in the streets and markets because he was high above it all. When Israel's watchmen looked out, it meant that they would lean forward and peer, even strenuously into the distance, keeping their eyes focused on the distance. They would observe keenly. They would spy out and wait for any further movement. They would keep watch diligently. If danger is coming, they would blow the trumpet and sound the alarm. Watchmen intercessors in the spirit have to lean forward, peer into the distance, and observe very keenly. They have to look out, spy out, wait for and keep watch as Israel's watchmen would do. So they are placed high in the spirit, our spiritual watchmen, above ordinary discernment. They are set up far above what is seen and understood in the natural realm, talking about our time. They are given the ability to see beyond the human scope. They have very keen vision and discernment. They can see into the future as well as the present. Time and space 
do not matter to them because they're able to see afar off into the spirit realm. That gives them the ability to block whatever it is that is coming into the earth realm that is not of God. They can avert spiritual disaster as well as natural disaster because they see it coming. Intercessors are strategically assigned in the church because God has placed and appointed intercessors with the oil of intercession. And these believers are those who possess a strong desire, having great passion and stamina to endure intense strategic prayers. And they not only pray when they are in church, but in their prayer closets at home. They spend hours at time before the Lord as they go beyond the scope of the walls of their homes into the spiritual realm. Prayer is vital to the continued functioning of the church and it is going to take continued fervent intercession to be successful in this epic war against the church. The church cannot survive without prayer. Intercessors are called by God to fulfill such a task. Intercessors make intercession according to the will of God, so they are important to the mobilization of God's kingdom. Not only are they mediators, but they are kingdom builders as well. They help build the kingdom of God through their intense and fervent intercession. They are the incense of Christ unto God. They carry the aroma of the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit. They are filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. They move with purpose in the spiritual realm to bring spiritual order. They move strategically. They move in an organized fashion in the spiritual realm. Their orderly move is systematic like trained military soldiers. They travel continents, nations, countries, cities, states, governments, etc. in the spirit and they move with precision which is due to their ability, their divine ability because they are led by the Holy Spirit who is the divine breath of God. Ezekiel chapter 37 and 1 says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. Intercessors pray in the spirit and the Holy Spirit directs their prayers into areas he desires them to pray about. Intercessors not only talk to God, but they also are involved in a direct contending in the spiritual realm against the unseen forces of evil for the purpose of effecting changes in the spiritual realm that will manifest the will of God in our natural realm. That makes intercessors not only mediators between God and man, but also warriors because they wage war in the spiritual realm. For instance, in interceding for a particular person, say Larry, who is an alcoholic, they will pray and ask the Lord to touch Larry's heart and help him to see his need to quit abusing alcohol and turn his life over to the Lord. In the same breath, they will turn their attention to the unclean spirit of alcoholism and contend and command the unclean spirit to leave him. And they will bind its power against Larry and cast it out of his life. They will pray for Larry even for years until that stronghold is broken because intercessors are relentless and they are filled with the stamina that only comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. Leaders, it is of vital importance to appoint intercessors in the church who will serve as prayer warriors, who will blanket the church with intercession. Amen. Leaders ought to appoint specific believers over the finances, 
the choir, the pastor and his family, the music department, children's youth, etc., etc. And they should be appointed at least in pairs of twos instead of having one person over each category. The power of agreement. The intercessors who are appointed over a certain area will communicate with each other and would even get together and pray together over their assigned task. For example, if a pastor assigned Sister Sally and Sister Sarah over uh, himself and his family, they not only pray individually in the, each of their homes for the pastor and his family, but they may call each other on the phone or meet together and pray together for the pastor and his family. Praise the Lord. Now there are various types of intercessors, such as, uh, and, and we know uh, that as these intercessors have their uh, different departments or categories, that that is the position that the Holy Spirit will use them. Praise the Lord. The intercessors will be revealed by the leader if the leader would seek the Lord as to whom he has anointed with the oil of intercession. It is fairly easy to know where one is being placed as an intercessor. Wherever your heart is set is where you are called to be. If you have a passion to pray for the government, for example, then you are a land-based intercessor whose call is to intercede for leaders. Now, the different types of intercessors are, and I'll go in detail with, uh, with these here, uh, air-based intercessors, <clears throat> land-based intercessors, sea-based intercessors, prayer warrior intercessors, watchmen on the wall intercessors, gatekeeper intercessors, global intercessors, government, uh, governmental intercessors, regional intercessors, apostolic intercessors, prophetic intercessors, and armor bearer intercessors. Amen. Now, intercessors understand what God's will is, and they intercede to the Father uh, of what he desires, what's in his heart, they intercede that the Father's desire would come to pass. They do not give up, but they pray until they have broken through in moving the Father's will into the earth realm. God gave Adam dominion over the whole scope of the earth. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to go into uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, sea-based intercessors, and over the fowl of the air, air-based intercessors, and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. Moveth upon the earth. This would be the land-based intercessors. Adam was to be in control over everything and to keep order. Amen. So, I will go into each and every one of these uh, intercessors that I've listed, and I will begin with the air-based intercessors. Air-based intercessors. These intercessors, uh, they represent the spiritual realm, which is the unseen. Air-based intercessors deal with demonic spirits that navigate the atmosphere in this world. They contend with demonic spirits in the principalities that are over the region. These are prayer warriors. Air-based intercessors are prayer warriors. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We hope and pray that you were blessed by today's teaching. We can be reached at 518-683-3007. That's 518-683-3007. Please visit our website at lwcog.org for more information on our teleconference services.